once of all, I thank God for this beautiful evening and also for the felicitation program arranged by Naga Students Union Delhi. Respected Dr. Zushimo Yantan, President Naga Scholars Association and also the moderator of this evening's felicitation program. Respected Mr. Hinoto, President Naga Students Union Delhi and his uh, colleagues. Honorable Minister of School Education. Mr. Pradesh Kuar Singh, Women of Manipur, Honorable Former MP from Manipur, Distinguished Invitees, all the pastors of different tribe churches here in Delhi, my dear students, friends from media, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank the Naga Students Union Delhi for organizing this felicitation program and uh, showering your blessings on me and my friend, Dr. Noru. We have nothing to give you in return, but we shall continue to pray for all of you to let God bless you abundantly in the coming days. This evening's felicitation program with the theme is Speaks, Speak for the Nagas in Parliament. For Nagaland, this is the 55th year running of our statehood. And there has been many member of parliaments. But so far, from the day one we got the statehood, no one has been blessed with any assignment here in the government of India, Delhi. And when I was serving in the state, and when I come here, and go to the parliament, I used to think in my mind that I wish to be a member of parliament. Fortunately, when I got elected in the last by-election and I entered in the parliament, I was so frustrated because I didn't know anybody and also I knew only few people from the Northeastern states. And also when the parliament was on the session, I became so frustrated because I was at a loss. Yes, we are elected and representing our people here in the parliament. And today, fortunately, from our outer Manipur constituency, Dr. Nuru has been elected. And I feel so relaxed that I'm going to work with him. And I want to congratulate all the voters of outer Manipur parliament constituency for posing their confidence on the leadership of Dr. Dhuru. Yes, there are many other friends from the Northeastern state, but especially we being Naga, we will have more closeness and then we will work 
protocols of Nagas, irrespective of our affiliation in the states. Here, I would like to, uh, taking this opportunity, I would like to briefly share with all of us about the parliament practice. One parliament ele election uh, assembly could not, uh, parliament constituency election could not have a uh, election because of certain problems. And in this 17th Lok Sabha, we have 542. Total strength of the parliament will be 545, including two presidents nominee. But that is yet to come. Every session, there is to be shadows and a business being listed for each day. And I, I thought that it is same as in the state legislative assembly. But when I came and started asking how to put state cushion and state cushion and how to participate in the urgent public importance and how to take up important matters under rules 377, it was not same as I was thinking. Be it state cushion or unstate cushion, it goes by lottery. This time I put 12 cushions. I have missed 7 cushions because it did not come in the lottery. And also to take time under rules 377 for the next day, say like today before 5 p.m., I have to submit a form and there used to be lottery. One of the MP used to pick up the names who submitted the forms and they will pick up only 20 in a day. And that also they give three minutes only. And towards the end of the day, if time constraint is there, they give even less than two minutes. So in the last 16 house, I walked straight away to Honorable uh, Speaker and I told her, Madam, I'm from Nagaland. I'm, I'm the lone Lok Sabha member. I have been trying to raise some urgent public importance, but I'm not getting the opportunity. I came to ask you a special request to kindly give me two minutes. She said, don't be so discouraged. This is the practice. I cannot help you. Because some polit political parties, they have 30, 40, but also among them, they used to select only one, uh, one or two, and they speak on behalf of their other colleagues. So it has to go like that. And if we calculate three minutes into 542, it is 27 hours. And in a day, business transaction is at the most eight hours. Therefore, it will be very difficult to give more than three minutes for any member of parliament. So I said, Madam, I understand your problems, but please understand my problem also. Naga political negotiation is going on for more than 21 years. And I need to raise the issue on the floor of the house. So she at last agreed to give me two minutes on that day. And at last she told me, this 16th house has very limited time to be over. But in future, if there is any solution, Definitely, as you will come to the parliament, and that time you can take enough time to participate in the debate. But in the normal business, it will be very difficult to make an exceptional for any parliament member. So that is the problem where we get stuck up. In the same way, 
even for amendments. I have this time I have moved amend, uh, two amendments only to participate in the president's address to both the houses. I am yet to see the list, but uh, I'll be fortunate to take the uh, to take part in the debate. But even that, they will give me only three minutes. In the last house, on 13th of February, in the closing of the session and the closing of the 16th house, there was a sort of farewell program. And all the senior leaders were asked to speak. So, Dr. Farooq Abdullah from German Kashmir, former Chief Minister and member of the Parliament. He was also asked to speak. He stood up and, and said, Madam Speaker, as usual, if you are giving me only, only three minutes, I, have, I, I don't want to speak, and he took seat. The Honorable Speaker said, no, today is the last day of the session and the last day of the 16th Lok Sabha. Therefore, briefly, it may take your time. So he spoke about five minutes. So that is how things are going in the parliament. But whatsoever may be, in our different capacity, if we have to move from door to door, office to office, we, Dr. Huru, myself, and other friends, we are prepared to do that. So I assured all of you that we will give our best. Coming to second point. My dear students, since this program is organized by the Students' Union, I want to share a few of my thoughts with all of you. You are all far away from home. And you are here as a student. And I should say that you are privileged groups of students who could come far away from your own respective places to study here in Delhi. I know you all have that in mind, that sooner or later after you complete your studies, you have to go back home. And as we have come a long way to pursue your studies, I want to request all of you to dedicate yourself and to be sincere in studies. And those of you who are in final year BA or in uh, final year universities, I know you have a different aim in life, but you must mentally prepare what you are going to do as and when you pass out from college and the university. I did only my graduation from Shiloh. In my last year, I started thinking whether I should go for postgraduate, whether I should go to study law, or whether I should give up my studies. But at last, I studied to give up my studies after my graduation. Because those days, I'll tell you that from my birthplace to our district district headquarters in Yabado. We used, we used to walk on foot while going to college and while coming back from college. So I had the determination that I must do something for my people. And by the grace of God, in my first election, I got elected. And from that same all constituency, 34 assembly constituency, I got elected four times. And within that, I could provide general staff road from Zinhiboto Anato to Kipri. With that, I was so grateful to God because He helped me to fulfill my dreams. And after fourth election, I shifted to Dimapu. I'm just setting an example. You have a long way to go. You have to decide 
before you pass out from the college and the university. Unless you do that, some of you may lose the directions and you will find yourself nowhere. Therefore, I want to request all of you to be very sincere in your studies. And also those of us who are here for certain periods. Let us continue to extend support to our students, to our Naga fellows who are living here in Delhi. Maybe it was uh, one month back. I do not use my phone except to receive the call and to make the calls. But through some friends from WhatsApp, I got a, a new information. Let me be very frank this evening that some of our Naga girls drinking in some place and that was spread all over our state. I was so discouraged and I felt so much why they should do that. But when I think one or two days, I come to a conclusion that because the government in Nagaland and other parts of the states where Nagas are living could not give enough employment, that's why they may be, be doing that. And that I share with the Honorable Chief Minister. Unless, until we resolve our Naga political issue, I believe the same problem is going to be there with our young upcoming youths. And it is the responsibility for all of us how to help them and how to do away all those undesirable things that is taking place even here in Delhi. Lastly, I want to share with all of us Article 371A under the Constitution of India has given a very strong protection to Nagas. And our leaders those days, I think it was one of the best agreements met between Naga people and the government of India. But by and by, I believe on many areas and on many issues that is being misused. There is nothing to hide, but we have well deposit in our state. But we have not been able to make use of it. Whereas inside Assam, drilling is still going on. And there are many oil fields which are feeding Numaligar, Gawhati refinery, and other places. And last parliament election, well, I was flying over that area. Even three new drilling sites I could see with my naked eyes, which is just about to reach Bagajan, Newland Road. And here, on the oil issues, some have brought the issues in the Supreme Court. Some are saying that it is our will, we will not give anybody, even to the state government, unless there is enough share for the oil bearing area people. But you see, there are things that we should leave it for the future generation, but there are things that we should immediately make use of it. And for, especially for Nagaland state, in a year we get only four to five hundred crores revenue. And in India the highest revenue earning state is Maharashtra and second highest is Tamil Nadu. 
and the third is Delhi and Haryana. Even without the assistance of the government of India, this state can survive. But for us, we cannot survive even one year without the assistance, financial assistance from government of India. But I tell you today that the constitution is very clear that land and its resources belong to the people. But beyond that, there, nothing is mentioned how to make use of it and how to extract the wealth. Because anything beneath the ground, it is in the concurrent list. And the government of India have been continuously saying that because of Article 371A, they will give special consideration in revenue sharing to Nagas. But we said we will not do anything with the government of India. If we said we will not do anything with the government of India, we cannot sell even a drop of oil outside Nagaland. Because it needs the permission of the government of India. I'm citing only one example. We are fighting with ourselves and we are making ourselves a beggar to move from office to office, from door to door in Delhi. I think we must realize our mistakes. And since we are going to be a future leader of our state, and our people. I want all of you to bear that in mind and uh, we must, before it is too late, we must take certain corrective measures in order to survive. Otherwise, if we are stubborn, selfish, I think sooner or later we definitely we are going to become a beggar. And in addition to that, I thought all the Nagas are under the umbrella of Naga Students Union Delhi. But even the, the, some tribes are not under the umbrella of Naga Students Union Delhi. Definitely, when we live in one place, when we live in one society, there are chances to have differences among ourselves. But that differences should not be taken as an excuse to separate from one another. Whatever differences are there, as a leader, we must try to resolve and sort out the problems and uh, live together as well. Otherwise, even here in Delhi, if we show our different colors in presence of the people of India, where do we stand and where are we going? This is what I want to send a message, even our other Naga Students Unit, to have second out and to come together and live as a Naga and live in one union umbrella. Otherwise, whatever justification they may give or you may give or I may give, I think that is not going to help us, but our differences will always take us back. Therefore, I will also be leaving, Dr. Doro also will be leaving here with all of you for another five years. If we can be of any help, please come anytime and we are prepared to cooperate with all of you for anything that has to be done here in Delhi. Therefore, please do let us know and we will continue to work with you for another five years. With these few words, once again, I thank the President and all of you for making this felicitation program with 
honor and respect. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable MB, for your words of encouragement and directions. Well, Mr. Dukwewoyap to me is currently the Member of Parliament from Nagaland and he served as President of Eastern Subi students before joining active politics. And Mr. Dukwewo has served as Cabinet Minister for Transport and Communication Public Health, Engineering Department, and Public Works Department. He was inducted as Cabinet Minister for School Education and Parliament Affairs in May 2015 as well. Thank you very much.